off the beaten path. The key to travel is flexibility because things change. In the proper frame of mind. Yeah. Yeah. My last tourist. Oh, really? For all the right reasons. Do it for yourself and for someone else. Sonrisa, smile. Respectful. I'm not going to start eating goat. Thoughtful. When food is offered, you really need to eat it. Authentic. Raw. Raw travel. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is Carlos Phoenix with the Indie Lounge, and today we are having a special guest. Uh, you can see him right next to me, Mr. Robert Rose of Raw Travel, and um, we are just basically this is like an update show. Um, we had talked before and uh, about uh, some independent show that he's put together that's now going to be released worldwide, and it starts off today. So um, the episode we just watched. Or well, we saw we watched it. Hopefully, you watched it. And um, uh, let let's talk a little bit about what's been going on since last we spoke. Yeah, man. Well, first of all, if you see more bags under my eyes or wrinkles or gray hair, which I know you're seeing, it's not just uh, the natural aging process. It's was sped up because we were in uh, Central America for eight weeks, man. We started off in Mexico City, uh, June the fourteenth. And we ended up in Panama City, August something, 5th, 15th, something like that. Basically like two months, busing almost the entire way. Um, I think we took some, a lot of boats, a lot of boats, a couple of trains, and like one plane ride the entire time. So it was very environmentally friendly, uh, but it was, it was some rough travel because we were shooting almost every day, no days off, earthquakes, volcanoes, you know, it was... It was uh, it was crazy. Yeah, the the episode alone was just um, insane because um, you you went to Quito uh, yeah. in Ecuador, and um, I, I have family in the neighboring country, so it's very similar in terms of its territory. Um, yeah. it, it's gorgeous, gorgeous, very hilly yet mountainous, and, and absolutely beautiful. Um, you you had gone to the top of uh, a mountain over the city yeah. of Quito. Yeah. And you had mentioned uh, the quality of air. Can you elaborate a little bit on that? Well, it's just keto is really high up. And, and the altitude, I don't personally do so well in high altitude places. You can you can see it in my face, I think, or at least I notice it. Um, I have a hard time breathing. Uh, I don't know if I'm partially asthmatic or not. My sister is, so who knows? You know, I run like five miles a day, not every other day, but... Um, I had a tough time a little bit, and the, but the air was so pure, man, mm. and it, it, it was cold. I had on my hoodie, and I was still free. You know, it was cold, and the view was incredible, and I don't know. Something about the sky gets bluer when you're that high, so it was, it was incredible, man. I mean, it takes a long time to go be the, via the Teleferico, like 30, 40 minutes, I think. Wow. You know, from what I remember. It took a while. And um, so if you, you don't like confined spaces or if you're prone to panic attacks, you might not want to do it. Now, on top of the mountain, um, outside of the gorgeous view, what, what's up there? Well, they had uh, snacks and things like that. Like, and there was a park even that you could go and, uh, uh, you know, you could go, uh, you know, basically nature, be involved in nature. Get away from the city because Quito is a very urban environment. Uh, it's a big city. Um, a lot like I would say maybe Medellin or any of those cities that sit in the valley. It's very long mm-hmm. and skinny, and it's grown and it's gotten really big uh, over the last few years. So traffic is a problem, pollution is a problem, uh, maybe some crime. Uh, as no, a matter no, of fact, the pollution reach up that high, or or does it just kind of get pushed down into the city? I, I that day we were there, it was really cool, crisp, and clear, and that's what I was you know commenting about was how fresh it felt and how beautiful and i mean i grew up in tennessee so i went to the smoky mountains a lot as a child and it was a similar thing but multiplied times like four or five Mm -hmm. you know so it's it's really intense and i think it's really good for you to go up there and breathe the thin air and if you can hang and maybe you know it'd be nice to run i know i can run five miles but maybe if i ran a mile up there i'd be like you know, really gradually start to get conditioned. And uh, we really don't have high peaks like that in the United States. I mean, Denver's a mile high city, but mm. Quito's really, really high. And uh, it's, uh, 
it's a it's a beautiful spot, man, and you get to see it from a beautiful perspective. Now, um, I'm guessing you did you shoot these episodes in the order that you're presenting them, or did you just choose the city first? No, actually, we shot it. Uh, they, they've been shot in bunches, and this was uh, part of the first bunch that we shot, which was from. Uh, November of 2010 until, I believe, June of 2011. And Ecuador was actually the last episode that we shot. The, this one oh, really? was the next to the last. Yeah, so we're almost doing it in reverse order. Um, one of the reasons for that is that, you know, when the shows get to Colombia, you know, I felt like I was a little green, and I didn't want to start that way, you know. Uh, by the time we got to Ecuador, I felt more comfortable on camera. Um the other reasons were I just thought it was a good episode to start with, you know. So we we could start with whatever we wanted to. So why not start with that? So it's weird. You may see me looking younger, <laughs> <laughs> reverse aging. You're like, wow, that high altitude's good for Rob. You know, he's looking younger and fresher. Well, I'm actually six months younger in the in the later episodes. You know, that's funny. Um, so tell us a little bit about what what was going on behind the scenes. Was there any kind of craziness or? Or now, it's like, like you said, you, you were a little bit more with practice. Um, did things yeah. go a lot smoother? Well, uh, I think the most um, amazing thing, and I've told this story many times personally, I didn't, I didn't touch on it in the show because I don't, I don't want to cause a panic, but I, I got there the first day. This is my second time to Quito. Uh, so I got there the first day, the day ahead of the production crew, which is common, because I just want to you know, get there a little early, do a little pre-production and uh, I was going out into, uh, the, you know, the main tourist area. And uh, essentially, I was just like a block away, but I had my camera. And uh, when I had my uh, camera out at night, not the smartest thing to do because it's a $1,000, $1,200 camera, the D7. Wow. And uh, I was just taking some photos of some graffiti and things like that, which actually show up in the show later on when we were talking to the punk band Demeter. And I was just there, you know, I had my camera out, and uh, four guys surrounded me and uh, tried to take my camera. And, you know, I yelled and screamed and fought, and I have been robbed before, and I did not want to get robbed uh, this time before the shoot. Uh, I had so much at stake. So I probably did what I would not recommend people do, and uh, but I screamed and yelled and, and fought back. And luckily, they didn't have weapons. They're pretty harmless guys. I think they were on drugs and looking for drug money. Mm. Bottom line is they didn't get the camera. The police caught them. Uh, we found them a little later on, uh, just walking around <laughs> the main tourist area. Wow. And, you know, but nothing was done. And so that was pretty wild. And that's the story I tell over and over and over because uh, even the time I got robbed before, I was sort of tricked into it. Uh, this time I was actually the first physical, uh, you know, violence that someone, you know, had, had threatened me with and had tried. But I'll tell you, Carlos, as I tell everybody, in every instance of robbery or near robbery, it's always something I can point back to and say, of course, I was being stupid. And in this case, I had a very expensive camera out late at night, uh, walking around uh, really close to the tourist area, but a couple of blocks outside of it. And, you know, that's all it takes, man, you know, and uh, it's just you're a target when you're a tourist. It's not that these places are more dangerous than, say, the United States. I think they're actually safer because they didn't take out a gun and pop me. Right. Nobody went crazy and just shot a bunch of people. Um, you know, it was just somebody saw an expensive camera, saw an opportunity, thought I'd be an easy target, and they were wrong. Yeah, that that uh, tends to happen. You'll hear a lot about that when you're traveling around. Tourists, tourists are yeah. an easy target because they're not familiar with the area. They don't know where to go for help, stuff like that. So, so yeah, that's a good uh, that's a good tip right there. Yeah, totally, totally. Just don't bring your camera out at night, uh, you know, unless you're with some people. I was alone. So that was the other thing, you know. Wow. I was alone. Daytime probably be cool. So, um... So that's one exciting story, but um, I know over there there's a lot of uh, fun activities at night. So what, what's the nightlife like over there when you're there? Well, I mean, the nightlife in Quito is pretty good. Uh, I think the, the nightlife, I mean, I, you got to forgive me, I haven't seen the episode in a long time, but I think it's called La Mariscal, and mm -hmm. uh, that's where all the bars and restaurants are. The first time I went to Quito, there was a blackout, and uh, mm -hmm. so it just I was in the middle of dinner, and the whole city went black. Nobody panicked, and I was just walking around like, you know, so, you know, it's funny that uh, that happened, and, and then the second time I went, I almost got robbed in full day, you know, not daylight, but with all the electricity on. Right. Um, so, you know, that was exciting, but really, it's a generally safe area. There's a lot of police presence there. Uh, you want to stay in that area. Maybe take a cab, taxi at night was what I would recommend. Uh, but then, uh, you know, we hooked up with our buddies, uh, as you saw in the episode, Demeter, 
the punk band, and we went to a totally different side. Uh, you know, what I like to do, I like to mix it up, man. I go to the touristy part. Just to, you got to see what that's about. That's the easy part. Right. And then you find out from the locals, where do the locals go? And, and a lot of times, they'll go to the touristy parts, but they'll also go to some other. It's, it's akin to going to, I still go to Times Square, even though I live in New York. But I don't spend all my time there. Right. You know, right now I'm in Chinatown, you know, which is also a touristy place. But uh, I know places in the village and places like that that tourists sometimes never even go to, you know. And uh, it's the same thing. So it's cool to find out from a local where people hang out. And uh, that's where we hung out with Dementor. I can't remember the area of town, but it, it was a nice nice bar, nice, really nice bar and restaurant. So um, you, you go to Quito. Um, some of the cool things that I saw in the episode um, – was being in the center of the earth, so to speak, uh, right there on the equator, which is one of the unique features of, of Ecuador, hence the name. Um, yeah. But but do you, do you feel it? The uh, the tour guide Javier mm -hmm. was an amazing tour guide uh, in Mitad del Mundo. First of all, every travel show I've ever seen has done the Mitad del Mundo, the, the center right. of the world. <clears throat> so we had to do it, uh, but. In pure raw travel style, we wanted to obviously do it in our way. So we, we covered, like I said, the touristy parts. You feel like you're being negligent if you don't. But we went to Mitad del Mundo and spoke to Javier, and there's actually three areas that they consider the middle of the world. Mitad del Mundo, where all the monuments are, and then where Javier is and his park, and that's supposedly the center of the world. And then there's where the indigenous people, just about a mile away, say that the true center of the earth is but uh, what javier did was he showed me how you know as you saw on the show the water, water changes water. direction and some people think it's a trick i'm like i don't know i haven't really looked it up but i'm like it was very convincing to me i had no strength in my hands when he was trying to like when i would be standing directly over what he said was the equator um you know i had a hard time keeping my balance uh, he was able to balance an egg very quickly. There were all these little things that was like, wow, man, that's pretty crazy if this is true and not just some kind of crazy trick. And as far as I could tell, it's true, man. I don't know. Somebody's going to have to correct me. I know, I know in um, Australia uh, they do that whole uh, water going the other way. Uh, uh, yeah. So when I saw this in the episode, I'm like, literally, it, it's, it was spinning the opposite direction. Right. Like five right. feet away from each other. It was pretty right. sick. Yeah, no, no cuts, nothing like that. I mean, we didn't do any tricks or anything like that. We didn't know what was going to happen. He, he was just showing us what he shows every uh, traveler that comes through there. So we were, we didn't know everything he was going to do. And you know, what a great guy, man! He was very entertaining. I yeah, love he that. Sound, he sounded like he knew what he was talking about too. Okay. So, um very cool, very cool. We just rolled up and said, "Hey, anybody want to talk to us?" And he did it. There's no pre-planning. We didn't plan that out. Now, now, what was the name of that creature that you kind of bit into? Um, it, oh, lo it cool. looked like a nice, cute little <laughs> gerbil thing. Yeah, yeah. they're very cute, and uh, that's what's funny. Like, you know, I was petting them, and Javier showed me one, and I was petting them. And then um, when we went to see the musicians at Otavalo, the musical family, mm. um, they, I can't pronounce it, so I'm not. <laughs> but basically, uh, they fixed some for dinner, you know. They were like, oh, you're going to eat with us, right? And uh, we're like, yeah. And I'm like, kui. So they brought out the kui, which kui. is a very... Um, normal meal there hmm. and they had him still like you know and there's a shot of him in the show with the teeth and the everything like they you know he was still basically like they had fried him mm -hmm. and uh, all the fur was not completely off either when I'm eating it so I'm eating it there's a little fur in my teeth <laughs> I can, <laughs> but it truly I can did imagine that at all yeah it wasn't, it wasn't you know and I'm like mmm good you know but I, I've gotten used to sort of lying and saying mmm this is good because they're sitting there watching you you know so uh, would I have it again? I mean, it tastes like fried chicken. Okay, really. I was about to ask you, what does it taste like? Yeah, I mean, when you fry something that much, I don't eat fried food normally, so when you fry something, it all tastes like fried chicken to me. So uh, That's a good point. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I've had, like, uh, I think it was fried crocodile or alligator, one of those. And, yeah, I mean, a little chewier, but um, you're right, it does taste a little bit like chicken just because it's so fried. You got to broil it or do something different if you really want to get the true taste of that. Now I've had kui in the stew and it, I didn't like it. Yeah, I don't like it just because they're they're too cute to be eating, man. Now, do the know? kids have them as pets? I think so, but just like you know, I grew up on a farm in Tennessee. We had cows, and some you know sometimes we'd have a pet cow, and you know when it got time to go, it's time to go. You know, wow. so uh, 
you know, it's, it's, it, it's sort of like that, you know, life, as you know, in a third world country, developing country, is much more harsh and, uh, uh, you know, eating food versus keeping a pet, so, so eating food's going to win. What, um, in terms of it modernizing, because again, you know, I too, I'm, I'm, my parents are from South America. Uh, I've been to Colombia, just got, uh, was there just this early this year. Um, in terms of its development, it sounds uh, like it's been developing fairly quickly. You, you mentioned the size of the city. Um, what, what's, what do you feel is still not developing? Well, they just opened a new airport, and it's really nice. It's a, pretty far from the city center, uh, but it's really, really nice. But some people are complaining because I guess it's far, you know, for people to travel to. But uh, it's really modern, really, really nice. Um, and it has some really nice areas. Um, I, you know, I think Ecuador, like uh, most countries in Latin America, like many countries, uh, you know, like I, like I told you, there was a blackout. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you may have blackouts. You may not have uh, hot water, depending on where you're staying, which it gets cool in Quito because of the altitude. So, okay. that you know, hot water means more in the winter than it does in the summer. Mm -hmm. um, other than that, you know, it's... It's got the indigenous influence, which is what I like about Ecuador. Uh, anytime you have some indigenous people, I consider them really salt to the earth people. Uh, not they're just not overly friendly or anything, but you get the feeling that they're there's something about them, their history of uh, like kind they're, of like they're being more grounded. Is that what you mean? Yeah, more grounded. They know who they are. I mean. You know, there's definitely problems there. Don't get me wrong. There's a lot of poverty and there's a lot of issues there. But they do seem to understand where they are in relation to the planet. And they're not always chasing a dollar or something like that, which is very refreshing when you're coming from the United States, which is a consumer-oriented economy. Mm -hmm. When you go there, it seems more about like, you know, hey, if you have enough to survive, you're, you're good. And, you know, there's more important things than just, you know... And maybe it's because they don't have the opportunity. I, I don't know. But it's it's a good welcome break from just a bye, bye, bye mentality that we have, um, unfortunately, in the United States. And, uh, you know, I like to take a break from that every now and then to remember that life is so much more than that, you know? Yeah. Uh, you definitely don't get that feeling here. Um, no. Uh, you go there and it um, there's definitely a little bit more of a, a family kind of uh, social yeah. environment. Um they just sit back, relax, have a drink, uh, and and it, a lot of South America is like that. So um, it is something that uh, we can probably learn a lesson from here. Um, Absolutely, more live for today, I think, than than just worry about tomorrow all right. the time. Yeah. So, so what do you what do you take away from that country? Like, what did you feel you you grabbed uh, mentally, emotionally, um, passion, that type of thing when you when you were leaving? I, I think the. Uh when I went to Otavalo, for example, the Otavalo market, hung out with the beautiful indigenous uh, musician family. You know, they're, they're, first of all, very talented musicians. Mm -hmm. They gave us a CD. We used some of the music in the show. You had everybody, the little kids. Any, any copyright issues there? I'm sorry? Any copyright yeah, issues Yeah, I know. Well, there? that was a big issue. So we had to make sure we, we only used like a couple songs because, you know, we couldn't really get the... Uh, uh, you know, we got the releases, but, you know, like, I was always like, now, is this a folk song, or did you write this? <laughs> right. But, but, I mean, it's really beautiful. I mean, just on a personal level, I still listen to the music to this day. And people think, you know, I like punk music. It's sort of reflected in the show, underground right, music. That. But they would think that, you know, that would be just the polar opposite of punk music. And no, I love that kind of music. Uh, and you can laugh if you want. I'm like, I love the flutes and the stuff. I think it's... Um, it sits. Uh, the reason I like punk I don't music. Know. Is, I mean, I, I've listened to you know music like that, and it, it kind of puts you back in the country. Just if you close your eyes, um, right. you, you just feel like you can breathe the air again. There, it's pretty I, sick. You hit the nail on the head, man. Yeah. I listen to that music when I'm running. Uh, when I was living in, in Santa Monica, California, I go running on the beach. Think about how manicured that beach was. How very, for some reason, there's something fun missing from that beach. It's nice, it's beautiful, but it's got no soul. something like that. Yeah, it's just got no soul. And I'm like, man, let me put on this music, and I would just imagine, and like you said, take myself back there, Yeah, and I could squeeze out another mile or so, and it, it was, uh, it still does that to me. I still love that music, um, you know, and I, I, I love it. I think that was my favorite part of that particular trip, was just that, just hanging out with that family. 
good vibes, man. They were just good people, man. Very friendly cool. people. You could feel the warmth. You know, you can feel it. That's very They're cool. Good I, I like how they were trying to offer the cameraman uh, some food. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, you know, we're a small crew, and they're they're just hospitable people. That's the thing. Whether we'd have had a camera or not, they would have treated us the same way. They're not impressed by cameras, you know. Yeah. So one of the things that we were talking about is uh, being able to kind of um, go a little bit behind the scenes as to what other things had happened on the episodes that you'll be releasing. Um, right. One, again, I'm going to congratulate you for this amazing success of being Thanks. able to take uh, everything that we talked about in the last uh, episode that we had talked with you about in uh, independently doing the show. Traveling to all these places, getting the production to look absolutely beautiful. The production's phenomenal. Um, everything looks beautiful. And uh, the graphics, the, everything, um, the effort, the work that it takes to get there without a huge, massive team from some kind of major network. So I commend you on the kind of work that you put in together. The episode looks as, as good as any other travel show that I've ever seen. Great. Thank you. Um, Two, uh, I want to be able to give the audience the opportunity to be like, hey, I'm sure more things happened on these episodes. And then I want to be able to kind of allow you to share those experiences because um, you get a glimpse on the episode. And and going to all these countries is so much more and so much richer, I'm sure. And being able to at least uh, talk about those experiences, reminisce a little bit, and, and kind of um, remove the production portion of it and kind of give a little more of a down to earth feel um, is another thing I wanted to kind of be able to do with you and, uh, and, and kind of enhance and enrich the, the show by kind of giving the audience a little bit more access to you and allowing them to possibly even write in, ask questions and we can review all that. So, uh, so I'd like to be able to continue doing this and, um, and, and we'll go from yeah. there. So, yeah, man. No, I love it. Uh, let's do it, man. I mean, it's, it's good to, um, the whole purpose of the show is we talked about the first time, or one of the purposes, one of the, the missions of the show is to help people that might be scared for whatever reason. And I hope I haven't hurt that by sharing my story <laughs> in keto. Well, well, no, I'm not going to gloss so. over the truth. You know, I'm not going to pretend everything's lollipops and rainbows right. like some TV shows do. It's not. Uh, yeah, and it's, it's it's any country too. So it's not, um, you yeah. know. I, I went to school in, in in Europe and Italy, and we had gypsies there who would yep. you know try to strategize walking around you and do some silly thing. Uh, but by the most part, these are just the countries are uh, about the culture and 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 history that are well. I mean, we're talking about thousands of years before right. the U.S. even existed. So. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I love the fact that you're going out there and kind of bring a touch of that to us. So I, I appreciate that a lot. Yeah, we want to keep it real, man. And, and that's why I would always, you know, even though we didn't mention it in the episode, we didn't feel like it was appropriate because my carelessness shouldn't really be mentioned. But as we produce, as you see the show progress, you will see more and more that when things go wrong, we go ahead and shoot it. Right. Um, you know, so you'll see that I get sick in Mexico City. There's an earthquake in Mexico City. All that stuff, you're going to see it. Wow. So, you know, I hope that people will stay with the show. I hope that, uh, you know, I appreciate the compliments. You know, as a producer, I see things, you know, that maybe you guys don't see. And I'm like, oh, I wish we could have done that or whatever. But I hope it's good enough that people will continue to watch because it's going to get better and better. And do do send feedback because that's going to help us produce a better uh, show as well. And, and that's... That's what it's about, man. It's about the audience, man. This is independent TV, and um, you know, but we have the support of some really good stations across the country, and um, you know, especially there in Atlanta where you are, uh, the CW, CW. Uh, gave us a great time slot Saturday afternoons at five thirty. God bless them; they're awesome, and we have several of those, uh, you know, throughout the not not in every city because I just couldn't get to every city, but right. we have a lot. So, so yeah, you're hard. you're you're covering uh, a very large amount of of territory, um, and my understanding is that you're also um, outside of the United States as well. Yeah, we'll be there. We'll be outside the United States. I mean, they're going to be shopping it at a, a, a television festival right now called MIP, and uh, you know, it's 
theoretically, they're telling me it's a very uh, has a very good shot of being in several countries by early 2014. So you know, we'll see, man. I mean, um, you know, the U.S. is where I see it, so I'm always going to be really uh, tuned into that. And um, you know, it's just it's just a great opportunity. I'm very grateful for the opportunity. And, uh, you know, I hope it lasts, uh, but if it doesn't, it's going to be a great ride. And uh, the way people can help us, uh, because we are independent, would just be spreading the word. You know, yeah. uh, if you think somebody would like it, know, like to know about this show, go to rawtravel.tv, uh, hit the Facebook uh, like, like it, tell your friends. And um, that, that means a lot because we, we don't have a marketing budget at all, actually. <laughs> okay, so this is it. This is the, this is the marketing. Um, this is it, my friend. Free. You are the marketing budget. And um, you know, I'm going to be on television uh, here locally in New York uh, in a couple of days. Excellent. And uh, that's a good thing. You know, it's six in the morning community affairs show, but whatever, man, I'll take whatever. And I'm, I'm very thankful and grateful for it. I was in the New York Post. We had a little shout out there. Every little bit helps, Carlos, and that's why I think what you, I think I'm thankful for what you're doing, and uh, I hope your viewers like the show. And if they do, I hope they'll share it. So um, uh, let's just you know we'll, we're going to end off this episode, but I want to invite everybody to uh, watch the show. Um, yeah. it, it is uh, in a lot of major cities throughout the United States. So if you're watching one of those cities, fantastic. Where can yeah. people catch up on what channels they're available? Yeah, go to rawtravel.tv and click on where to watch. And uh, that's a pretty up-to-date list. Always check your local listings because things do change with sports and things like that. Yeah. And if you don't see your city listed, uh, then you can drop me an email and what I can do when I go see that city or I can, you know, maybe try to get it, you know, what they call cleared uh, for next season or maybe even this season. Or you can always call your TV station and request it. But that's asking a lot of a viewer. So you can just shoot us a feedback, you know, on feedback and say, hey, man, why aren't you in my city? Blah, blah, blah. And chances are I didn't get there. Uh, if I had it, it would have been there. But, um, you know, one step at a time, man. <laughs> so um, just for the audience, uh, just keep in mind, this is completely independently done. Yeah. And if you had watched this episode or, or any of the new episodes that will be coming out from now on, um, just know that every shot is just it's just him and the camera guy and, and possibly even a producer um, just doing their thing. So uh, a lot of respect uh, that I have for you, Robert, on that and, uh, and the fact that the quality is so good. So um, so can you give us a, a hint at what the next episode's about? Yeah, well, we continue our, th- our trip through Ecuador. So in this case, we are going in order of how this was filmed. So we went from Quito... And then we start hitting some of the rural areas. We bus all the way to the coast of um, Guayaquil and Montanita, which is a famous surf party town. And along the way, we stop off in Baños, which is really like the – if you like adventure sports, that's your spot. Like Eco Adventure Sports is Baños. Stop off in Cuenca. Stop off in uh, a small little indigenous town to take the train, uh, the Devil's Train of the Devil's Nose, which is very famous. And uh, then we end up in uh, Guayaquil, which uh, is totally different from Quito, but is, is actually a very big city as well. And then uh, Montanita, which is like a surf town. So you get a lot of different uh, perspectives. And so we'll continue. And it's, it's really the heart of what Ecuador is about. So if you miss Quito, don't worry. You're really going to see why most people go to Ecuador. They usually don't hang out in Quito more than a couple of days. They usually roll on to places like Baños. Cuenca Montanita, you know. Oh, very good. Um, so where can the people find you? Me? Uh, well, we're at twitter.com slash raw travel TV. Uh, and we're also at facebook.com slash raw travel TV. And uh, just go to raw travel TV and you can, uh, you know, hit us feedback, email, whatever, and you'll find me. I'm always around. And uh, you can email, email us questions. Uh, you can send it to me if you want at Carlos at the lounge network.com and would you like somebody to email you questions as well oh uh, yeah man go ahead they can do that uh i think the best thing to do is to go raw travel.tv and hit our feedback form because we just got it rolling today and that's why that's there Very good. otherwise i'm afraid it'll get lost if you just send it directly to me so because i'm getting so much uh spam and stuff like that now so hit the feedback form and it goes in a special folder that i'm going to be reading Excellent. and uh i'll re- try to respond to each and every one you can say hey man i saw it on uh on the Lounge Network, and that way I'll know it came from Carlos, and I'll, I'll give it special VIP a treat, treatment. 
and hopefully we can uh, maybe read some aloud and uh, answer some of those questions on the air. So yeah. thank you yeah, very much for guys watching. Um, we're going to be trying to do these episodes as often as those episodes are out and just uh, stay with us. You thank got you for it. Watching. Man. Thanks, man. Take care, Robert. Thank you very much thank for coming. Thank you, man. Here's a tip. When in Latin America, watch your step. One more take. <laughs> yeah, I like this one, man, because I look Mexicano. We made our way a little further south. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.